It's crazy how quickly time goes by. I remember watching Drew Brees play at Purdue under Joe Tiller and wondering how this six foot, incredibly accurate passer was truly going to translate to the National Football League. And I believed in Drew Brees in the sense of I thought he was going to be a good to pretty good NFL starting quarterback. But man, when you talk about all these years later from that 2001 draft until now, he's been more than just a little good. He's great. He's all time great. Elite. First battle Hall of Famer and all the accolades you could give him. It's crazy to me when you think about Drew Brees in that 2001 draft class even. He wasn't the most notable quarterback taken. That was Michael Vick. People might forget the Chargers originally had that first overall pick. The Falcons traded up to get Vick. The Chargers at pick five took the more notable player in the first round for them in that draft class, which was LaDainian Tomlinson, who himself became a first ballot Hall of Famer. Drew Brees was second class. He was the first pick in round two in that draft. He was the afterthought. The, oh, maybe he'll be that guy, but in a way where he was taken in the draft, that thought being that they could potentially be looking to replace him in a few years. And then in that 2004 draft, they take Eli. Eli doesn't want to go to San Diego. So they trade for Phillip Rivers, and they're looking to replace Drew Brees long term. So Drew Brees has to play the 2004 and 2005 seasons with the specter of knowing long term he's not going to be there and he's not going to be the guy. To now, this guy is setting all types of records. He has all types of passing records. And even when you talk about the explosion of the passing game in the National Football League, it can be argued that statistically Drew Brees is the greatest passer in NFL history. It's insane. And what's insane about it is when you think about after that 2005 season, he hits free agency. The Chargers aren't going to bring him back. It's the Dolphins that were the hottest for Drew Brees. And they ultimately passed on him because of concerns over his right shoulder so they could sign, if I remember correctly, Dante Culpepper, oopsie daisies. And here come the Saints, coming off of all those years of suck, coming off of that disaster of a 2005 season with the natural disaster that was Hurricane Katrina. The franchise needed something. The franchise needed someone to help lift them out of the doldrums. And when you think about greatest free agent signings in sports history, you think of the true, like, creme de la creme. You think of Reggie White to the Packers in 93, Barry Bonds to the Giants in 93, Greg Maddox to the Braves at the same time. Drew Brees is better than all of them. He absolutely is. Reggie White was great, but you also had Brett Favre that was developing into who he was going to be. And the Packers were the Packers in terms of their history. Yes, years, years back in the past, but they were still title town USA in a lot of ways. The Giants had a long, proud history and had been to the World Series in 89, just a few years before Bond signed with the organization. The Braves had already been to the World Series without Greg Max. Here are the Saints, though. In their previous 39 seasons from their inception in 67 until 2005, that disaster of a year with Hurricane Katrina and all that happened there, they, in 39 seasons, had made the playoffs just five times and won exactly one playoff game. And it wasn't even Jim Moore that won that one playoff game. It was freaking Jim Hazlitt. So you're talking about Drew Brees coming to New Orleans for a city, for a franchise that desperately needed a savior. And by God, if you ever thought that there was a savior and a true epitome of a franchise player, it has to be Drew Brees. Because everything changed when Drew Brees went there. And you could throw Sean Payton into the mix, obviously, and they kind of go lockstep here. But ultimately, it's the quarterback that orchestrates it and gets the job done. And it's been a shame to me that he hasn't gotten the same ball washing over the years that Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and others have gotten Brett Favre and so forth. When you can make the argument that Drew Brees' impact is every bit as great to his franchise and honestly, bigger. Bigger. And statistically, he might be better than all of them. And arguably did it with less help than any of them in terms of the help around him. So on Monday night, when it comes time for him to pass Peyton Manning and become the all-time leader in passing art, I was so happy to see it happen on a big stage like Monday night in prime time with the world watching in a standalone game because Drew Brees deserved that spotlight by God. For all he's meant for the Saints, for all he's represented for the Saints, 
for as criminally underrated and underappreciated as he's been. I mean, to me, when you talk about elite, all-time great quarterbacks, Breeze is in that mix, and he's so criminally undervalued, underrated, and underappreciated, it's insane. For a franchise that in 39 previous seasons had went to the playoffs just five times and won one playoff game, Drew Brees is 116-79 and 79 as New Orleans Saints starter. 116-79. and 11-time Pro Bowler. Part of the underappreciated, undervalued, underrespected, only one-time first-team All-Pro. But for an organization in 39 previous seasons, made the playoffs only five times and won once in the previous 12 seasons including a Super Bowl title over, oh, by the way, Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts in that 2009 season. And you look at the numbers, the all-time leader in career passing yards, and still going strong. As of this recording, 499 career touchdown passes. He could pass Favre this year, most likely will. He could pass Peyton next season. And it'll be a race between him and Tom Brady as to who ultimately will retire with the all-time career touchdown passes record. This is a seven-time leader in yardage, four-time leader in touchdown passes, four-time leader of the league in completion percentage. And that's only scratching the tip of the surface of the iceberg of Drew Brees' statistical prowess as an NFL starting quarterback. 12 straight seasons of over 4,300 passing yards, five seasons of 5,000 plus passing yards. There have been nine of those seasons total in NFL history. And even when you talk about the explosion and the increased growth of the passing game in the league, there have been nine 5,000 plus yard passing seasons. He has five of them. He was also the first one to break Dan Marino's single season passing yardage record. And when you want to go a little bit more, when you look at the top 10 and top 15 and so forth, he's also got his sixth highest total, which is 4,952 yards, is tied for 11th most with Big Ben in NFL history. So he's got six of the 12 most prolific passing yardage seasons in NFL history. Nine straight seasons of 32 plus touchdown passes, four seasons of a completion percentage over 60%, where you consider kind of 60 70%, excuse me, we consider 60% kind of like a minimum viable standard. 65 is really good. 67 is elite. This guy, for Christ's sake, has four seasons of completion percentage greater than 70%. He's the all-time leader in passing in career completion percentage at 67.1%. 67.1% career completion percentage which is in consider the amount of attempts he has made over the years. He has been consistently accurate year in and year out. Third all-time in game-winning drives. And people forget about this. They forget about this. Is all those years that Johnny Unitas had the record for most consecutive games with at least one touchdown pass. And people were talking about old-school football people and old-school football media are talking about that record will never be touched. It will never be broken. Well, Breeze broke it. He smashed it. He went and took it to 54 games consecutively with a touchdown pass. Oh, and by the way, just for good measure, he came back later and ended up with the fifth longest streak in NFL history where he threw for a touchdown pass in at least one game in 45 games in a row. So that's basically 99 out of 100 games, because there was one game in between those two streaks where he didn't throw a touchdown pass, 99 out of 100 consecutive games the mother humper, all six foot of them, with the birthmark and all, threw for at least one touchdown passes. And in the process, over his 12 plus seasons as a New Orleans Saints starter, has missed two games. And if I recall correctly, only one of them was due to injury. The other one, he was held out at the end of the 2009 season when the Saints had already clinched home field. When you look at it from a statistical standpoint, and you look at the fact who's the most notable player he's had around him offensively. Marcus Colston was a good player, but you'll never be talking about him for the Hall of Fame. Jimmy Graham had some nice peak moments, but not enough sustained in order to be thought of as a Hall of Famer. Jimmy Graham well, certainly was not a Rob Gronkowski. Marcus Colston, you know, what guys like Devery Henderson and so forth later on in his career. Michael Thomas was nice, but he's only a couple of years into the league. He's had guys like Ted Ginn and so forth. I mean, when you look at it, 
you're sitting there and saying to yourself, he didn't have guys like Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne and freaking Edgar and James and tight ends like Marcus Pollard and Ken Dilger and Dallas Clark like Peyton Manning did. Peyton Manning put up phenomenal numbers with vastly superior talent around him, not to mention the offensive line with guys like Tariq Glenn and Jeff Saturday. When you look at Drew Brees and what he's really had around him, especially from the skill position, you could argue the crew that he has now, especially with Ingram and Kamara in the backfield and then Michael Thomas outside, is the best that he's ever had. And even that, even that is not that great in terms of an entirety of a unit. That's just a couple of real impact players. Drew Brees deserves every bit of ball washing that he got from ESPN on Monday night, that he got from the NFL and national sports media, from social media, from fans, from everybody, and so much more. To me, when you think about a guy like Drew Brees, and you think about true epitome of franchise player, the Saints were nothing before he got there. And let's be realistic. When he leaves, they will continue to go back to being nothing. And I mean this as no disrespect, but even Tom Brady, as much as he's been to the New England Patriots, there have been other great Patriots players over the years, and before he ever came into being, they had been to two Super Bowls. Yes, they had lost both of them, but they had been to the Super Bowl twice. So there was a better history with the Patriots than there certainly was with the Saints. You look at Favre and Rodgers. You know, even when you talk about those two guys, the gold standard to Green Bay Packers quarterbacks always has been and always will be Bart freaking Starr. He won five NFL championships, including the first two Super Bowls. He will always be that gold standard. Like, even though Aikman won three Super Bowls, Staubach will always be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys for all time. So Favre was that dude but he wasn't that level, dude, in the sense of his franchise's history, especially when you talk about the Packers and all the proud winning tradition they had had, even though it had been in a long time, you know, from when he took over from when they had had that success in the 60s. And then Aaron Rodgers steps into a situation, so he can't equate. Peyton Manning, I'm sorry, when you look at it from a Colts standpoint, there are a lot of, especially older Colts fans, that will still always view them, yes, that's the Baltimore Colts, but more so, that's Johnny Unitas' organization. And even if you want to throw Peyton Manning into the mix, it's kind of equivalent. It's not so clear cut and dry. When you think about true, true franchise players, like you think of that player, you think of that team, you think of that team, you think of that player. Drew Brees, this will sound crazy, but you think about it, it is true. When you say New Orleans Saints, the first player you probably are always going to think about is Drew Brees in the same sentence, the same way and manner you would when you think about the Chicago Bulls, it's Michael Jordan. The Cleveland Cavaliers, it's LeBron James. And you think about it, he is in that level of conversation with all the other great Yankees over the years. And there have been so many of them, Hall of Famers, legends, and all-time greats and icons. All them motherfuckers can kiss Babe Ruth's fat dead ass because he will always be the Yankee of Yankees, period. That is not even up for debate. And from a Saints standpoint, that's who Drew Brees is, the epitome of a franchise player, the greatest free agent signing of all time. And unfortunately for him, the most undervalued, underrated, underappreciated, great, legendary, elite, all-time NFL quarterback we will ever see, who frankly probably deserves more conversation for being the GOAT at his position than he will ever, ever get. And that's a shame. The way he's conducted himself and carried himself and led that franchise and represented that city, represented the league. He deserves for everybody to wash his chotum, his perineal area, the bottom side of his scrotum, the top side of his scrotum. And honestly, even if you happen to nip up against the tip of his head, it's okay because Drew Brees is a fucking legend. And maybe some of that legend will spread onto you and your seed. He's a freaking all-time icon, and I'm glad he's getting this recognition that he so richly freaking deserves.